Okay, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakak Kadash. Double honors to my apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's hope for elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Ties of War. Back at you again with another lesson. And this lesson is going to be entitled Fight the Good Fight of Faith. Fight the Good Fight of Faith. And um, we have to fight in this truth, starting spiritually, okay? Because this is a spiritual war. You know, the scriptures say the mind is desperately wicked, you know? So you have to fight off those wicked thoughts. You have to fight also the temptation, okay? That Satan will tempt you to go against the Lord, law, statutes, and commandments, all right? Because we're rehearsers of the righteous acts, all right? Even though we're not perfect, but we're striving to be perfect, all right? And uh, these bodies are programmed to go off because we're in sinful flesh. But we have to fight. So the Lord, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through Yahweh Shai, have given us the skills to fight. And it's true for righteousness. We're fighting until Yahweh Shai come. Okay? We're fighting until we're delivered. Scriptures say, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. And um, a lot of the times when we're being afflicted, it's not joyous. You know, we joy in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, of course. All right? Because that's the anchor, okay, that, that helps us fight through the, through the sufferings. It increases our faith. But when we're going through it, it's not joyous, man. All right? Whether you have infirmity, dealing with body ailments, whether you're having financial issues, whether, you know, you're just being attacked, you know, from those who are close to you, you know, like your woman and things like that, you have to fight. You have to remain positive in this truth. Okay, and know that the Lord is going to make a way for you to escape. All right, the Lord don't give us nothing that's too hard for us. So, you know, I want to read the scripture here. Well, before I do that, let me go into this book, which is in the Apocrypha Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus, the second chapter. And I'm going to read a little fast through it because I want to get back to the little, couple precepts that I had lined up. So this is uh, Sirach chapter two and, two and one. It says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in a time of trouble. All right. Now, that's easily. Now, it's easier said than done, you know, but you got to fight. You got to go through it. This is why it's important as our apostles and elders, brothers on down, they teach us here in Great Millstone. You have to apply the scriptures. If you don't apply these scriptures, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. And when you apply the scriptures, it, show, it proves, it shows and it proves that you have faith in the Lord. All right? Because you got to trust the process. Trust the, pro, the, pro, the process of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So the scriptures say, set thou heart aright. And your heart is talking about your mind. Which the Hebrew word there is lob, not the chest muscle. Not that. That's just a muscle. It says, set thou heart aright and constantly endure. Notice it says constantly. Alright, because this is an ongoing battle. It is an ongoing war until Yahweh Shai come. Alright. As Apostle Paul said, he uh he finished the race, you know, he finished his course. So you got men. Who time is up which the Lord is using okay and the Lord will call for their spirits to go back to the spirit world and if that happens he's not gonna lose his place in salvation all right because the Lord said in what's that first Timothy's uh, first Thessalonians the fourth chapter all right where the Lord is gonna deliver those who died in the Lord first and then those who still alive that remain, they're going to be caught up together. 
So in this, in this sinful flesh we in, and as Apostle Paul also said, he's betwixt between the two, you know, because he would rather be with the Lord, which is paradise, you know, no pain, no misery, no suffering, you know, when you at rest, but it's needful to be in the flesh because you have to edify the Lord's elect so that they could be delivered. So remember, when we're going through the worst is hell and pain, okay, while this word is continuing to go out and the Lord haven't brought the famine on the word yet, we have to continue to teach. So we got to fight the good fight of faith because the Lord's elect have to be sealed and they're going to be sealed by through the word of the Lord. And that's starting with the prophets. All right. So let me continue. It says, set thy heart aright and constantly endure. It says, make not haste in a time of trouble, because if you are a coward, you're going to make haste in a time of trouble. You're going to run from the Lord. When here it is, the Lord controls all the situations. Every situation and everything that happened in our lives is because the Most High ordained it. All right. Sometimes when you're going through things, it's just a trial. It's just to see where your faith is at. Or some cases, the Lord is directing your path. He might want, he might want your mind to be in a certain space, a certain thought process. All right. He might want to, you know, control, uh, turn your path, you know, straighten your path out to walk down a path that he want. So, or just the fact you're just suffering because, you know, we sinned. We sinned in our past life and we sinned also in this life. So it's a lot of things to think upon when you're being afflicted. And this is why we have to be thankful and, uh, and asking the Lord for mercy. And also strength. We need strength to get through these tough times. We need strength to get through this fight of faith. Without it, we, we, we will lose. All right, so verse 3. It says, Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. Because being in the Lord, you're not going to be a rich man. Not saying that a rich man can't believe in the Lord and will change his ways and repent. But the scriptures say it's hardly for a rich man to enter into the kingdom because everyone that serves the Lord is going to be, is going to be, all right, afflicted and more on the poor side, man. You know, uh, as Solomon said, give me food convenient for me. He said, at least I'll be rich and forsake the Lord. At least I'll be poor and still. Okay. So we're going to be content, you know, with what we have. And that's just being a regular man. And when we say poor, it doesn't mean that we're going to be bums. All right. Scriptures say, when have the righteous been forsaken and begging bread? When we say poor, all right, there's really only uh, two classes. All right. You have the rich or the poor. All right. Really middle class, you know, is considered poor when it comes to the rich. And uh, the scripture, James 2 and 5 says, hearken, my beloved brethren, have not the most high chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him all right so when we say poor it's not talking about being bums you know and on the street corner not having a home you know not having uh financial uh, uh necessity things that we need all right the lord said whenever the righteous been forsaken and begging bread so it says, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. And at the very end, especially uh, the end of this society, okay, when Jacob's trouble come, we're going to be brought low before we're brought high. All right. So we have to. So, so in a way. In the, man. All right. So in a way. And what the Lord. Uh, does in certain cases in most of the cases you know it's a way that man can't understand all right because the lord deals with the underdog so it's it's a method within what you would call the madness all right as that saying go the method within the madness all right we have to lose to win okay we have to lose of this world 
to win eternity, man. To win Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? So that's why the Lord said, He that uh, loses his life for my sake shall find it. He that findeth his life shall lose it. Roughly paraphrasing. So let's continue. It says, verse 5 For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him, and he will help thee. Order thy way of right, and trust in him. So gold, you know, we want to be as gold. So the Lord is going to try his gold, all right, through the fire. And it says, acceptable men, key word, acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Because these are the elect. It says, believe in him, and he will help thee. Order thy way of right, and trust in him. You know, key word in there is trust in him. We have to trust in the process of the Lord, okay? Even when we're going through hell. It says, ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest you fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe in him, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. It says, ye that fear the Lord, hope for good, and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? So where did the Lord despise those that called upon him? The scriptures say the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run up into it and are safe. Okay. The scriptures also say the elect shall call upon his holy name. So whenever was the righteous despised and the Lord forsook them? It says, verse 11, for the Lord is full of compassion, compassion and mercy, long suffering and very pitiful and forgive of sins and save in the time of affliction. So that's why, you know, we have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling so that we give Yahweh Shai, you know, something to work with. When it's, when it's up, dealing with us in this sinful flesh, you know, so that the Lord could pray for us to the, to the Father, all right? So Yahweh Shai could pray to us to the Father, and he showed compassion, mercy, long-suffering, and very pitiful, and forgiveth our sins, man. And it says, saveth in the time of affliction, all right? So when we're being afflicted, our works will shine, all right, upon the Lord's mind. It will shine in his heart. In his mind to know the good we have done and what we strive for so at our very end the lord will show compassion mercy long suffering all right very pitiful uh forgive if our sins save us in the time of our affliction man okay verse 12 woe to the uh fearful hearts and faint hands and faint hands and the sinner that go of two ways all right and you can read the rest you know you know, we're very familiar with this chapter, brothers that have been in the truth for a while. You know, it's a it's a go-to for the very beginning. It's a go-to for the very beginning. All right, so let me get back. Let's hit the point. This is uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. So we got to fight the good fight of faith. So this thing of ours is a fight, you know? And when we're down and when we're being afflicted, you know, it's easier said than done. But when we're down and being afflicted, we got to remember Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right? So pray for strength, strength to persevere through the troubles, you know? So the Lord, you know, hopefully make a way for us to escape. So it says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. So when we're fighting the good fight of faith, we're laying hold on eternal life. That's why you don't render evil for evil, okay? You don't uh, do tit for tat. You know, when you're someone doing wrong to you, pray. Call Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Tell the Lord what happened, all right? He knows what happened, but talk to the Lord. I remember Elder Apostle Gabar. He always uh, said this years ago, and it's stuck, you know. We want to build a relationship with the Lord, all right, with our Father, with uh, our uh, big brother, Yahweh Shai, as well. We want to build that relationship 
and we build that relationship by prayer. You know, we're always talking with the Lord, no matter, you know, what you're doing. You know, you could do a, a, a you know, a very concentrated meditation prayer, you know, when you reading the Hebrew and putting up all the prayers, you know, or you could just be driving or walking and you just talking to the Lord, man. Either way, it builds our relationship with the Lord. All right. We don't just call upon the Lord in a time of need. We even rejoice in the Lord when, when the Lord allowed us to rejoice. When we're happy, we're still praying, man. So fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life. And that's what you're doing. You're laying hold of on the eternal life, which is the life to come through Yahweh Shai. Whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. And that's why it's a reason why the, uh, excuse me, that's why it's a reason why Yahweh Shai sent us to the highways and byways. All right, to warn, to condemn, reprove, rebuke, exhort the name of the Lord, but also so that they will be the witnesses, all right, of the Lord's prophets and his word, you know? So it says, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. So really there's no clue for their sins, all right, to you Israelites. Now, now let me move on here. This is the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7 it says i have fought the good fight i have finished my course my course i have kept the faith henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them also that love his appearing all right so you see this is a uh, apostle paul and he says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course, my course, excuse me. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith, you know? So when, when there is nothing for else, else nothing, for, uh, nothing for us to do, when the Lord shut up the prophets, he make their tongue cleave to the roof of their mouth, you know? And we're waiting for the appearing of the Lord. You could say we have, we have kept the faith, all right? Even when a brother's at his last end and his, his, his spirit is going back up, he can say he has kept the faith. That's how we want to do it. We want to endure all the way to the end, as the scriptures say. Matter of fact, as Yahweh Shai has said, he, uh, he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. It says, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which is that crown Yahweh Shai is going to put upon the men, the men, okay, the elect men. Because that's the government body. That's the, the judges, man. The heads, okay, of the nation of Israel. Yasha Allah. It says, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Because Yahweh Shah is going to place crowns upon their heads. It says, which the Lord, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. It says, do thou diligence to come shortly unto me. All right, so that's the point on that. Okay, let's, uh, it's Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Now, it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So we have to put on the whole armor of the Most High, of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And that's this word. And it says that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So don't push topics off, man. You know, certain things you might, oh, I heard that. You know what I'm saying? Everything is needed for skill, for wisdom, for experience. You know, brothers bringing out the scriptures, you know that scripture, but a brother may have a different um, perspective. All right, but it lines up you know, with the word. It lines up perfectly to edify you through the Lord's word, okay? So it says, put the whole armor of, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil because the wiles of the devil are trickeries, you know? Hey, you might be getting afflicted. You might be catching hell, you know? You might be envious at the wicked because you see of their prosperity but here it is, you're holding to righteousness, but you're suffering. You know, that, that's going to happen. You know, you're going to be suffering, and then you're seeing the wicked having their way. 
you know, but you over here in righteousness holding to it, you know, practicing it, rehearsing it, you know, to the best of your ability, but instead just suffering. So Satan might try to play on your mind, those demons. You know, why don't you just, you know, get out of this truth and do something of the world so you could prosper? You know, you're going to have these different spirits that's going to attack you, you know. So it says, put on the whole armor of Yahweh that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. All right. Even Esau, you know, when he comes with his, um, his uh, devices, you know, don't be a uh, fool. The scriptures say we're not ignorant to Satan devices. All right. That MOB is still the mic, the mic, the uh, microchip. All right. I wanted to do a lesson, but, you know, according to YouTube, we can't talk about the crown royal you know what i found out is that it's an antenna it's a liquid metal liquid the brother shalaman the camp he know the name of it and it hardens up and it becomes an antenna and that's why you get the magnet thing going on you know and just uh my uh observation and what i think will probably happen is when they cut on 5g you're going to be hooked up to the highways all right it's just an antenna you know, something that goes throughout the, all the body, you know. So they plugging you up to the highway of things through that crown royal. So anyway, verse 12, it says, for, the, uh, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So know that when we're being afflicted, you got to see everything through the spirit first. You know, a person may come against you, but you got to see their spirit. You know, no, you, you got to know that, look, this is Satan. This is this is uh, Satan using this host to bother you, you know. And when you know that, it ease your anger, man, because, you know, this is how Bashim how Shah is doing. You know, this is Satan being attacking me because why you walking with the light, you know, you walking with the light. So you're going to be attacked by the dark. All right. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So this is not a carnal war. It's not carnal war. It's going to get carnal when Yahweh Shai cracked those clouds. Okay. It says, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And we know who rule in this world. And that's Satan. All right. With his counterpart, Esau, Edom, these international bankers, these elites. Okay. It says, verse 13, Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of the Most High, that ye may be able to stand against the wild, that ye may be able to, to withstand in the evil day. Let me read that again. Wherefore, take unto you, take unto you the whole arm of, of Yahweh, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. It says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the blessed prey, the breastplate of righteousness and, the, and your feet shrouded in the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Yahweh. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints okay which are the which really in this case is the elect all the elect so the main thing is that you want to constantly pray man all right praying always with all prayer and supplication all right which means it's debate man complain it says in the spirit all right that's why we uh say yahweh bashim yahweh shai okay and we're praying for spiritual things we're praying to be delivered we're praying for strength we're praying to increase our faith you know we're praying to uh you know, uh, to endure, endurance, you know, we're praying to, to hopefully the Lord give us that experience for wisdom, knowledge, understanding. It says, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the elect, man. All right. So now let's move on and I'm going to try to hurry up. This is uh, James chapter four, verse seven. It says, submit yourselves therefore to the most high resist the devil and he will flee from you you know so when you being plagued in the mind and them demons are plaguing you and tempting you you got to resist the devil you got to resist them you know you got to remain in righteousness no matter what and he will flee from you because eventually you notice 
if you ignore Satan and you resist him, all of a sudden, everything that you was, you know, having trouble, tr trouble about, is all gone. You know, it's done disappeared, man. That that didn't happen to me so many times. That uh, you get used to it. You know, oh, that's the number Satan. You know, and when you understand, when you have the knowledge and wisdom, the scriptures say, uh, the knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times. So it keeps you stable. You know, you you be angered at first. But once you you aware of what's going on in the situation or the moment, it eases your anger and you go, you bear with it, you know, you deal with it. So it says, draw nigh to the Most High and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. All right. So it's better to mourn. Okay, then to be at laughter, you know, being at uh, the excitement of this world, it's better to be in mourning because really, this is a period that the Lord set a time for us to mourn. All right, it's kind of you know when Jake uh, is out here doing what they want to do and uh, not acknowledging the ways of the Lord. All right, and this truth, it's sort of it's sort of like a uh, you know a smack in the face or a spit in the face. You know, and I give you an example because if you're a father or a mother, right, and you discipline your children, you know, and you put them on punishment, you want them to learn a lesson. You want them to be remorseful. You want them to be sorrowful, you know, and ask for forgiveness for what they've done is wrong. But here they are, you know, he uh, having fun while he's on punishment, playing the game, doing whatever he's doing. And it's like he never learned his lesson. So two thirds, you know, anger the most high, man. You know, by the by their ways. They they will not acknowledge the ways of the Lord. They will not turn from their wickedness. So they, they, they the Lord numbered them to the sword. You know, just think about if you're a parent and you got a, ch a child and you're punishing them for the wrong that they've done, but instead they uh they're not being punished. You put them in the punishment, but the punishment is not making them reflect on what the wrong they did you know so it's like kind of like a, a smack in the face or a spit in the face to sort of say you know they're not learning their lesson so be afflicted and mourn and weep let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness that don't mean you walk around here moping and mourning all day every day all right it's just a balance you know you would rather be in a mourning state than be in a joyous state living in the follies of this world man so to say you know, because you can't have both, okay? Now, the scriptures say, um, use the world, but don't abuse the world. So, verse 10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. All right, so this is my last scripture here. Oh, matter of fact, no, it's not. This is uh, Romans 8. This is Romans 8 and 31. It says, what shall we say then to these things? If the Most High be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay any thing to the charge of the Most High's elect? It is the Most High that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Yahweh Shai Hamashiach that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of Yahweh, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Hamashiach Yahawashah? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or famine or nakedness or power or sword? As it is written, for thou sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. <laughs> It says, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angel, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature should be able to separate us from the love of Yahweh, which is in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, our Lord. All right. This is in the book. It's my last one here. Isaiah. Isaiah 41 and verse 10. It says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy power. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. 
Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. All right, and that's Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Because remember, no matter what it is that we're going through, the Lord is going to strengthen us. So he says, Fear thou not, I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thou power. It says, I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with thy right, with the right hand of my righteousness. All right. So I know this lesson is pretty long, but I hope it's edifying to those of the whole for elect. You know, stay strong in the Lord and pray to the Lord, you know, for strength, endurance, mercy, you know, for knowledge, understanding, wisdom, you know, so that we can be stable in these times. You know, and we can persevere through all the troubles, you know, that, that awaits us, you know, for whatever it is the Lord put us through. So hopefully this lesson is edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakudash, double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.